Hello, everyone, and welcome to Ad Age's Publishers Panel, where we provide pers perspective and thought leadership on a critical or interesting topic facing the industry as a whole. I'm Josh Golden, the president and publisher for Ad Age, and today, of course today, we're going to discuss how emotion played in the big game of advertising, otherwise known as the Super Bowl. After more than 50 years of Super Bowls, the only score most people care about right after the Super Bowl is which commercials top the best of and most memorable ads. That's certainly the art of the business. And now there are significant advances in the science of why ads work and the actual feelings they provoke in viewers. Joining me today is the CEO and founder of Sentient Decision Science, Dr. Aaron Reed, to help us get a closer look on how the firm's cutting edge behavioral science technology shows us which emotions uh, elicit in the top Super Bowl ads elicit in viewers and whether those spots ultimately achieve their marketing objectives. Welcome, Aaron, how are you, sir? I'm doing well, hi, Josh, thank you. It's great You're to be welcome. with you. I'm so excited to, I, I gotta say, I, seeing this technology, seeing how it worked, I, 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 before the Super Bowl, I got a chance to peek at it, and I just can't wait to hear about uh, you know how uh, it played out yesterday. I will. I will remind everyone, uh, whoever is watching from all the places where you're watching all over the world, uh, just uh, just mention where you are watching from, and we'll uh, do a little shout out a little later. Maybe even toss a Q A Q and A uh, for us for a little bit later. But before we can get to the the shout outs, I have to start off with uh, jumping into this and finding out. Just give everyone because this is super exciting for me, Aaron. Uh, um, tell me how this technology works and who's use who's using it. Yeah, you know, in behavioral science, we've known for 50 years or more that people don't uh, make decisions rationally. And so essentially what we do is we take all that insight from behavioral science and we try to make it practical for business. There's two technologies that are really at play here. One is implicit association testing, which is measurement of the non-conscious mind of humans relative to brands. And the second one is spatial action coding, which is the expression of emotion on the face. And we're gonna combine those two things to understand how ads make people feel and why they have an impact on the brand. I'm people are using that, the largest brands, you know them, Facebook, yeah. Heineken, Kimberly Clark, Abbott. So Amy. many, so many amazing brands that were advertising yesterday. I'm reminded of the movie uh, True Romance, where Christopher Walken uh, reviews the uh, the 17 pantomimes that are in your face. So while you say nothing, you're telling me everything. So the 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 interesting piece for me is that you're actually registering people's faces as they're watching programming, and then that that those that face re facial recognition or facial facial capturing is what it is it providing the insight for how people are perceiving the ads it's how they're expressing emotion to the ads there are actually 42 different muscles in your 42. face 42 okay so yeah. it's more than 17 from so Quentin Tarantino got it close <laughs> you got it close we measure 72 different points on your face you know how when you get a new phone and you got to do your facial rec facial yeah. recognition to uh, map your face that's what we do first to map the face but this isn't to recognize people this is actually to measure the systematic movements of the muscles in their face that are being moved in a way that expresses how they're feeling so we're capturing that moment by moment while people are watching ads so I know that uh, would you mind can we show a few examples of this I know we have the we have a few I know you did the all the ads from yesterday but I want to just call out a few can we show 
how uh, specifically how maybe you can walk us through it. Let's show the Pringles example and show the the chart or the the, the they'll play it, and so you can see how how the uh, how the tool actually works. Is that okay? Aaron, I think that's great. And if we could pull pull that uh, Pringles ad up and just hit pause before we play, I'll give you a, just a, a quick awesome. introduction. So there's two measures here. One is a pre post change in attitude towards the brand. Right. And we can do that on attributes and emotions. So in this case, we measured some positive attributes and some negative attributes. One of the negative attributes that we measured was um, associations of disgusting with um, Pringles. We also measured positive attributes like appeal, et cetera. Because it was about flavor, like we're about flavors, flavors like jalapeno, right? the cheese stack and the pizza stack, et cetera. Listen. So we wanted to know, is that good for the brand or not? Right. And if you play this ad, you'll see Across the screen, you're going to see the emotional expression on the face of viewers while they're watching the ad. And you're going to see this one goes right into the negative category very early. The white line is all people, general population who watch this. Right. The red line is the people who actually became more disgusted by Pringles after watching the <laughs> ad. And I, you know, we ran this, we run these in under 24 hours. So if you had that insight, that first, if you could just pause right there. <laughs> if you had that insight on your ad, the first 20 seconds, almost 30 seconds of a 60 second, this is the 60, this is a 60 second spot, all going in a negative direction, more pronounced among people who felt you were more disgusting afterward, you probably would stop and make an edit to that ad. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that, because uh, there's such a tremendous amount of effort that goes into making an ad, it's, it's only going to be impactful when they can show, a, I guess, a, a rough cut. D is that sometimes how it's used with your technology? Oh, absolutely. If it's a rough cut, if we've got a lot of copy, or if you've got a 60 that you're trying to cut down to a 30 to a 15 or even shorter, yeah. you really need to understand the moments that are keepers and the moments that you really need to get rid of. Now, this is that 60. You can see in the middle of it, it's not engaging. Plus, for an ad that has to capture attention immediately, 15 seconds Oof. of that capsule floating in the ocean with no words, you've lost your audience. Oh my goodness. And so, and the pink, just so I'm clear here, the pink is showing dis disgust. It's a measurement of facial disgust. The, the pink is showing the people who felt Pringles was more disgusting afterward, their emotional <laughs> experience was even more negatively pronounced. Oh man. Okay. Well, this is obviously something that should have gone through your tool. <laughs> Let me. Um, you're let you're me, helping us get the word out. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, well, it's just it's so logical. I happen to tell you one of the ones that stood out for me yesterday. Obviously, the Rocket Mortgage uh, won the uh, USA ad, uh, ad meter, uh, yeah. but the um, Alexa was third. Um, can we just quickly take a peek at that one uh, and then see? Yeah. I just wanted to sort of highlight: Is it possible that this performance might actually be a better? predictor of business performance versus the ad meter. Oh yeah, and of course my answer on that is gonna be absolutely yes, but hopefully we'll be able to show you why. This- um, Let me walk through it, Aaron. This, this ad by Alexa is, is really brilliant. You're gonna see all people in blue, and you're gonna see the people who feel Alexa is less dull after watching in red. You're just gonna see their emotional response. If you can pause right here. This is actually my favorite line of the Super Bowl. There are 16 tablespoons in a cup. <laughs> <It's about to laughs> come up. Now, and watch the look on her face after Michael B. Jordan says this. All right, let's go. Everybody goes up. They're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and look at the sensitivity of the facial action coding at each joke point. You want to look for the inflection points. Where does it rise? Where do people start to smile? Where do they have an emotional reaction? It's at each of these joke points. Dim the lights. Don't dim the lights. Alexa, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Great sensitivity of the analysis tool there. Order me some bath salts. And of course, Alexa's getting edgy. They're very edgy with this, this ad. I think this is a great example of how if you just ask people, hey, did you like that moment when uh, she asks Michael B. Jordan put bath oil in, uh, in the shopping cart? I mean, what are people going to say? Some people are going to say, yeah, but most people are going to be like, well, it was all right. right. That but obviously, it was very impactful. That's what you get when you observe versus ask. Right. And I think that's will get me to my next point. Uh, thank you, Max. We can pull that off the screen. I think one of the interesting things, it's like a little Steve Jobsian, uh, asking people their opinion immediately creates this sense of you're asking their opinion and therefore their opinion changes. Do you feel that obviously people have a bias 
when you're asking them, but is there, can there be any bias when you're measuring people's facial reactions? Well, you know that truth, anything that you study is fundamentally changed by having it been, having it having been studied. Um, so what we try to do actually is try to remove as much of that research bias, any, any of that research bias that we can. And implicit techniques are really the best way to do that because it measures what's happening in the non-conscious mind without relying on what people are able and want to tell you in a survey. If they don't want to tell you that they really like that moment in the ad, they don't have to tell you if you're asking them. But if you're observing their face and you're measuring how their attitudes change after watching an ad, we don't have to ask the questions. We actually have scientific impact of the ad. We're looking at, you know, you hear that phrase, efficacy of a treatment. You hear that a lot these days, scientific evidence or efficacy of a treatment. This is scientific evidence or efficacy of your advertising. We don't want opinions. We really want the influence. It's just fascinating. I want to just quickly shout out a few folks that are watching us all around the world today. Let's see. We have Phil from Colorado, Shanice from Michigan, Kristen from Florida, Mohammed from Oman, Justin from North Carolina, Erica from Virginia, uh, Elisa from Kentucky, Mohammed from Saudi Arabia, and Flavio from Brazil. Thank you all for watching today all around the world. Obviously, the Super Bowl does have a big kick uh, for individuals, uh, in particular, knowing how much, I mean, the, the game it's aside the marketing and the entertainment is extraordinarily valuable and that's what is fascinating i, I want to find out i have a i have a question just based on what you just answered how do you if you're if you're removing bias from like the, the actually asking questions how do we how do you make certain that your your base that you're asking uh, to measure their faces that in fact isn't biased yeah, this is a really important point. And I think it was one of the missteps that um, neuromarketing made early on. The argument was being made that, hey, since we're measuring the brain, all we need to do is have 12 women and 12 men in a room. And we've got some fundamental understanding of how all humans will react to advertising. And that is just fundamentally not true um, because it isn't just gender and it isn't um, just demographics. It's how you grew up. It's the culture that you lived in. It's the values that are part of who you, are, who you are as a human, as an adult. All of those things are active in your mind and they're influencing how you react to ads. So absolutely, you have to have your target audience in your sample, just like any good quantitative research. Get a representative sample. We do this online and we balance via census or tag uh, tackle a very specific target market. If you're not measuring the people that you're trying to influence, you're not necessarily going to have insight on whether your ad was influential. Mm, so fascinating. I want to quickly uh, reintroduce you, Dr. Aaron Reed, because you, I believe, will be someone that people might want to know about some more. Um, I'm Josh Golden, just in case you were curious. I'm the president and publisher for Ad Age. And today we're talking about how emotion played yesterday in the Super Bowl. Uh, Dr. Aaron Reed is the CEO and founder of Sentient Decision Science and has a fascinating tool that allows us as marketers and advertisers to figure out how best to understand the specific impact that marketing that's created and shown to individuals can be seen. I am fascinated by what you have. I am curious. One major theme yesterday was the NFL's attempt effectively to counteract their handling of Black Lives Matter protests and a strong connection to Colin Kaepernick as a major player um, in the in the in the NFL or was a major player in the NFL, um, did what they showed yesterday help move the needle for them? Yeah, it did. And you know, we didn't have this. Um, we didn't know this ad. I think it ran right around halftime, maybe right after half. It did. It was like it was right around the half. Yeah. Yeah. And so we weren't sure what was going to run. We grabbed it and we ran it overnight. And yeah, we're going to pull up the results. So you can, so you can, this is twenty four hours. You can turn this around. I'm sure they we ran this overnight. And I love this illustration because it's actually going to show us really beautiful storytelling. It's got tension and release in it, tension and release. And what you'll see is that there's some negative emotion that people are expressing on their face while they're watching this ad, but mm. for good reason. That's intentional negative emotion that's being evoked by the creative in order to tell the story. And you'll see that line that's... Um, the lower line is the people who end up with more appeal for the NFL mm. after watching this ad. They go on a stronger journey. And we see that a negative decline there. And then we see a nice rise with this inspirational speech. You see an emotional journey happening that's very strong. This is really actually quite good for the NFL. I want to show you, take it right to the end. And we're setting it up for the, here's the, right there. And we pause right there. If you pause. 
When you're analyzing facial action coding of emotion, you want to look for the inflection points. Mm. What's on the screen right now? The NFL is committing $250 million to help end systemic racism. Look at what happens immediately after that statement. This is the emotional response. Boom, positive. It's even stronger among those people who have more emotional appeal for the NFL afterward. That is a very effective emotional journey. It's like pulling a rubber band. It's like tension mm. and release. Tension and release. And that's what you want in an ad. And if you could scroll down just a little bit, um, down into the dashboard. And yeah, you can see that change in implicit brand appeal. Can you this, focus on that? Yeah, thank you, Max. Yeah, typically we measure competitors here. Like we would measure... Um, Cheetos versus Pringles, you know, and uh, other snack brands. But for this particular ad, we said, well, let's measure change in attitudes towards the NFL. But the ad is so patriotic and it's obviously trying to, to help the movement, Black Lives Matter. Let's see what happens to attitudes towards those to two iconic images before mm -hmm. and after exposure to the ad. It lifts appeal for the NFL slightly, but look at what it does to patriotism. Mm -hmm. it, positive emotional appeal towards the American flag after a single viewing of that ad is significantly lifted and the attitude towards Black Lives Matter mm, is lifted after watching that ad. Fascinating. There was something else you showed me, um, Aaron, that was uh, uh, a chart on on bias. Was it something that was it yeah. with regards to this NFL as well? I have to say this is the... the this is it, yeah. This is it, yeah. This is... I'm, I'm most proud of this, of Sentient this year for doing this. This was something that we developed um, in May, in the middle of um, uh, in the middle of of all of the social um, injustice, for injustice the and unrest. And you know the origins of this technique are they're founded in stereotype research and implicit bias research. It was originally developed to study stereotypes and biases by social psychologists. 13 years ago, we took that and said, hey, we can apply this to brands and measure people's implicit attitudes towards brands. But now what we've done is we've essentially taken that same technique and we've said we can use it to see how brands are influencing implicit bias. So mm -hmm. let me just explain this ad. A hundred is essentially neutral or right. no bias. Right. Above is a positive bias, below is a negative bias. The blue lines show you before exposure to this ad, the very difficult but real situation in the US, which is there is a, an implicit negative emotional bias against black people. After a single viewing of the NFL Inspire Change ad, Button look right. at what happens to the implicit bias. Not only do we raise it for black people, we bring the bias down for white people. And you might say that's a bad thing. It's not because we want the absence. That's exactly what we want. We want the absence of implicit bias. And at least for a temporary moment, the single exposure to that ad achieves that social outcome. Well, obviously, the goal is to have that temporary moment ex extend as long as possible. Um, Aaron, that's fabulous. I, I have to, uh, I have to, I'm, I have to, I have to admit, there's, I believe there might be at least perceived for me a dark side of this potentially, knowing that uh, I'm a big fan of Black Mirror, uh, you know, and and seeing how technology can be, be used, frankly, you know, for the worst of mankind. Um, it, Black Mirror, by the way, is a Netflix series, which I recommend streaming. If, you, if you're if you looking for streaming stuff, that's not wasn't a bad one. But it is dystopian in its sort of view of technology in particular. How do you ensure the cutting edge technology doesn't fall fall into the clutches of the dark side uh, for uh, that could be used potentially, you know, against consumers or or to, to it, it, some, somehow pull out something that they are unwilling to release? Yeah, I think it's it's a great question. First of all, I'll just say this is all opt-in research, and while it's passive measurement, it's not um, scattered across the web and just observation of anybody who may right. be. Right, like you're turning it. on a webcam on someone's computer, and, and, you're, getting, and you're getting paid to do it. Hey, you want to do this? We're going to pay you for your time. It's all right. opt-in and it's explained. And of course, data privacy is taken very seriously, and all right. of that is very protected. So no personally identifiable information is possible to be um, obtained. So that on a very practical level, all of that is being handled, it's taken very seriously, it's really important. But the general ethics question is even, it's more important. And our argument on this is really, these tools and technologies are here. And it's really a race to see who's going to be able to use them most effectively. Because whether you're a good mind or an evil mind, you're going to use the tools that are available to you to get to your outcomes. 
we have a unique opportunity as an industry, an over trillion dollar advertising industry, to make a macro impact on the world. If we now have tools that can tell us in 24 hours whether our advertising can systematically reduce negative implicit bias, and we can use that as a social KPI as an industry, we have the ability to make a macro impact on the world and outrace that evil force. It's fascinating. It's fascinating. The um, I just want to obviously empathy is the word that I've heard kicked around the most regarding what we all need in this world. How is how can this tool help support being more empathetic? Well, I really appreciate this question. It's so important. It is this the word of the year, but it's what we all need, right? We all need to connect. We, we're desperate for need need emotional connection, and we need empathy and. When you think about what the root of empathy is, if you're trying to increase empathy in yourself, you need to understand what people are feeling, first of all. What are they feeling? And then just equally as important for empathy is understanding why they feel that way. And so what this tool do does is essentially automates the collection of data to increase empathy because it's telling you what people feel. Mm -hmm. And then by cutting it by their change in attitudes, it tells you why. So it's actually a tool that has the power, the potential to increase empathy for the human condition. Look at that. Someone just jumping in. Advertising is a force for good leading with empathy. I love it. Thank you, Rachel. I, I have a belief. Um, I'm sorry to admit it, but I, I would love this tool during like a Zoom meeting. <laughs> like, <laughs> are you into what I'm saying? I, I, don't, I don't even know if this is possible. Is this something that you're considering expanding into other different resources? like to know if my wife's like actually liking the dinner that I made. <laughs> I think we're a ways off from understanding your, what your wife likes your cooking, but Loves it. we're going to get there. <laughs> but yes, for this call, imagine we're, we're working on this technology and others right now. Imagine a little emotion meter in my upper right hand corner that I could read the audience of the people who are watching this and know whether to dial something up or dial it down. Imagine that will, what that would do for online educators and we move into the new space of having to teach and educate when you don't have the luxury of all that emotional feedback that you typically get in person. We're now facing, this is actually the biggest stream of emotional data that we've ever had access to as a human race. And it's streaming online. And we're at a moment in history where we have more access to emotional information than we've ever had before. It's time for us to, to use the tools that allow us to quantify that emotional response and use it to better communicate with everybody. Uh, Aaron, we got a good question from someone here. Uh, I don't know where it was or who it was, but thank you for it, uh, whoever sent it in. Some ads make me cry and some ads make me LOL. I believe that means laugh out loud, just for those of you who don't know. Uh, if your technology measures human emotions, uh, how does that quantify into sales? I'm a brand manager and I need to show that emotion, heartstrings, uh, or belly laughter lead to sales. Can you do that? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if you remember, I was thinking about Heartstrings this year. The Indeed ad is really inspiring. I'm not sure if you've um, you've seen that one. We don't, I'm not going to show results on it, but I just got to say, they really touch the tone of the moment. And when you look at that emotion, emotional data moment by moment, they've got this really brilliant line where their um, the brand needs to be introduced a little bit earlier for more brand attribution, but it's, sorry, but it's... Uh, get jobs we help blank get jobs we help blank get jobs and they fill that in and the emotional reaction each time they show a new person who's been affected by this pandemic and then it follows with get jobs we see a rise we see a rise but it brings people down first it is a bit tear jerking and then it's inspiring it's that kind of emotional journey that you want it's not just all about laughter in fact, the Tracy Morgan Rocket Mortgage ad, one of the funniest ads in the Super Bowl, were really entertaining. That entertainment actually isn't imbued on the brand. It's kind of flat. It doesn't get the same lift as other as other ads. So it's so not even, just about entertaining. So even though it won the ad meter, not wasn't necessarily the ad that had the biggest kick. Uh, yeah. That's fascinating. Uh, Dr. Aaron Reed, CEO, a founder of Sentient Decision Science. I cannot tell you how much I enjoyed this conversation. It was simply fascinating for me to hear how you're measuring this and frankly, how a company like yours exists that could really help marketers into the future. Thank you, Josh. This is really amazing. We could talk for hours on it. I really appreciate you having us. I'm excited. We're moving the industry forward.
Yes, yes, we, I hope you certainly do. Uh, I want to thank you, sir, and thank our audience for tuning in. And uh, thank you. I uh, hope to see you guys next time. Take care.